Hey everybody, and welcome back to Ready, Steady, Play. Who likes Star Wars? Well, it seems these days everybody likes Star Wars, and FFG knows it. This is Outer Rim, a game where you will be playing all of the uh, favorite characters and lesser-known characters from the Star Wars universe. This game stars Han Solo, Lando Carizian, and all of those other guys from the deck of the Executor in the second good movie. The fifth one. The game is for one to four players and takes about two hours to play. It really depends on your player count and the mode you're playing, because you can play to eight, ten, or twelve fame points. Eight is the recommended first game number, and twelve if you want a much longer game. So I think realistically you're probably looking at three hours for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to negotiate the Outer Rim, and how to fly around and smuggle goods and all that good stuff, so that you know how to do it well, and you can become the most infamous, or famous, or whatever you want. You can become the best Outer Rim person. It's a game for one to four players about smuggling and bounty hunters and mercenaries and stuff. Designed by Cory Konitska. I hope I've said that right. But uh, I apologize if I have not. And he designed Discover, Lands Unknown, and also other stuff. Like the original Mansions of Madness. But we will be uh, going through the rules for this. I will show you first the components in the box, then I'll show you how to set up the game, and then I'll run you through the gameplay so that you know how to do it when you get to your friend's house and you need to smuggle goods. So if this is a game that excites you, fear not, for we will be heading to a time long ago in a galaxy far, far away. First off, I'm going to do the components. Now, I've already opened this box and punched it and stuff because we played it already. But um, here's what you're going to find in the box. You'll find a typical rules reference and learn to play guide, which is the FFG way of doing things. You read this one first, it's going to give you all the basics and show you how to play. Then you use this one if you need to look up anything specific or resolve any particular interactions. But we're not going to look at those in this video. Looks like I'm going to tell it to you. We've got six big puzzle pieces that form the outer rim. These are going to be fit together. In this video, I'm going to show you the standard way of setting them up, but you can also randomize them. We've got two end pieces to complete the puzzle. We've got four player boards in different colors. We've got like ready orange, we got like gray, we got yellow and red, and also gray and red. Okay, we got four starter ship sheets. Now these are double-sided. One side's got the uh, G1A Starfighter on it, and the other side has the G9 Rigger. That is fun, starter ships. We got eight named ships. Oh my god, it's the Millennium Falcon. These are double-sided with a generic on the other side. That's just a modified YT-1300 light freighter. Hey, look, it's the IG-2000, also known as the Aggressor Class Assault Fighter. We got eight nefarious scoundrels, including Lando Calrissian, IG-88, Jin Erso, who was a rebel guerrilla fighter, but also apparently a smuggler, I guess. And of course, Han Solo. And Bosk. Hello, this is Bosk. You've got four faction tokens with four faction tokens of each faction. You got rebels, huts, syndicate, and imperials. We've got six white contacts, seven green contacts, and nine yellow contacts. Every player's gonna need a set of tokens like this, so there's one for every player. You got four faction reputation markers and one fame marker. Also, gold tokens. Players are gonna need these to track their progress. Loads of galactic credits. These come in one, five, and ten thousand increments, and players are gonna need these to track all their money. Damage tokens for fighting. We've got four player aids to help players keep track of what's going on. A deck of ship cards. These are spaceships that you can buy. Bounty cards. Find a person, arrest that person. It's Greedo. Gear and mod deck. Upgrade yourself and your ship. Job deck. Get a job, earn some money. Cargo deck. Is it illegal? Is it safe? Smuggle it, find out, earn money and fame. Luxury deck. Buy ridiculously expensive things and earn fame points. Player characters. You can be one of these people. They've got a regular side and an upgraded side. The data bank filled with stories and cool things for you to discover in the Star Wars universe. This is an AI deck, which unfortunately we don't have time to look at in this video. This is for single player, solo mode. 
and encounter cards for every planet in the outer rim. Whoa, and also like some things that aren't planets, like the Maelstrom and Nav points. We'll find them eventually somewhere in here. Yeah, there we go. So that's everything in the box. You've seen it all. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to set up a game of Outer Rim. So now we're going to set up Outer Rim. And the instructions say set up the board and then set up characters and then set up a marketplace. So uh, with that in mind, the board only is important if you're randomizing it. So there are two ways to play. Either with the standard configuration, which is tested and balanced and good, or you can just close your eyes and shuffle up all of these tiles, and they're all a bit different, so you kind of have to close your eyes and like try to randomize it as best you can, and then lay these out in a random way, and they'll all fit together and still function as a game, so you will have a random layout. And this is recommended maybe for later plays, when you've already played the standard version a bunch of times, and you want to try something a bit different, or, you know, replay it, it's a bit, um... It's a bit less balanced, but, you know, it adds excitement and variety to the game as well. And a bit more uh, thinking about your destinations and locations and stuff. So, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the standard setup in this. So, here we have it. You've got, from left to right, the Ord Mantel tile, Lothal tile, Kessel tile here. Then Nalhata, Tatooine, Ryloth, Naboo, and Ring of Calfreen, Takodana on the far right. So, on the right end of the puzzle, we've got Imperials and Huts. And on the left side here, we've got Rebels and Syndicate, which are the four factions in the game. But don't worry about that. More on that later. So we'll set up our damage, credits, and goal tokens somewhere in a communal pool where everybody can reach them. Next, grab those four faction decks I told you about earlier and find the factions that match the symbols. So here we've got Rebels, so we're going to get our Rebel factions. And you'll notice that the factions are divided up into four levels. One, two, three... Four. Look at that. So take your level one and turn it over onto the first node there. You can tell the level one because it's always got this 5,000 credit symbol on it. More on that later. The rest have different symbols. There's a fame symbol. More on patrols later, but these are enemy patrols. They're going to be running around. Anyway, put the rest down there in ascending order. Do this for all of them. Remember these contacts? Well, they represent different characters you might meet in the Star Wars universe. Hey, look, it's Chewbacca. So we're going to play with all of these tiles, and we're going to use the three different types, the yellow, the green, and the white. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them a good randomized shuffle. And you'll notice that there are different colors and numbers of pips on the back of these tiles. These are only used to help you differentiate them and serve no other purpose. Once you've sufficiently randomized them, slot in all of the contact spaces on the board with contacts of the correct colors. You should use every single token available in the core set. Once you've set up your tokens and your patrols and your board, then it's time to do character stuff. So we're going to start by picking characters. You'll probably find yourself in a situation where multiple people want to be Han Solo or Boba Fett or Bosk or whatever. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to roll all of these dice. And whoever rolls the most hits and crit symbols is going to get to be the first player and have first pick. This is important later, but hits and crits are successes. Well, that's a great roll. I've got four hits and a crit. There's the crit there. Those are the hits there. I have a stand a good chance of being the first player. These dice also have the I and the blank, and these are worthless to you at this time. Once you've determined who the first player is going to be, you're going to go clockwise around the table picking characters and receiving the following things. You shall receive one character card for your chosen character. Now make sure you have this with the side up that says personal goal on it, and not the other side. Which is a reddish color, not gray. You're going to get a standee for your character. You're going to get one fame marker, four reputation markers in each of the faction's colors, one player reference. You're going to get a starter spaceship. You can choose either the G1A Starfighter or the G9 Rigger. This one's slightly faster. This one's slightly more shooty. Boba Fett would have the shootier ship. Then you're going to get 4,000 credits if you're the first player, 6,000 credits if you're the second player, 8,000 credits if you're the third player, and 10,000 credits if you're the fourth player. Once you've got those credits, put them on board your spaceship and you're ready to do some more setup for your character. 
Because table space is a thing, I'm going to set up a two-player game, but this would be the same for two to four players, the only difference being the amount of credits each player gets. Now that we've got all our stuff here, what we're going to do is we're going to take our faction markers, put them here on our board, make sure that they match the correct faction lanes. We'll take the little fame marker here, put it in the zero space, because we've got no fame yet. Finally, we're going to take a look at our character card here. And on the bottom here, it says set up card 90 and one hut, positive hut reputation because Boba Fett works for the huts. So we'll take our hut marker, which is this one here, and we'll chalk it up to the positive space. But more on reputation and stuff later. Set up card 90 refers to this data core deck. Remember this? So we're going to find card 90. What? There's more than one? So grab all of them. Fan them out. Pick one at random. Dun dun dun! We've got a bounty. More on how bounties work later, but we have to find Ponda Baba. Makes sense for Boba Fett. Put this into your job or bounty slot here under your board. The other thing you'll note about this card is that it does say starting planet Mon Calamari. So this is going to tell you where you start. Bah! It's a trap. Mon Calamari. And how's that? It starts in Lothal. An Imperial control planet. So I'll set up a second player board and then I'll show you how to do the final part of setup the marketplace. So now I'm going to show you how to set up the market. So take the bounty deck here, give it a shuffle, flip over the top card and put it out. Do the same with the job deck, the cargo deck, the gear and mod deck, the luxury deck, the ship deck, and then put out all of these other cards face down in stacks that match their backs. Make sure you give all decks of cards a good shuffle so that they're sufficiently randomized. Don't shuffle this one. Keep it in order of ascending numbers. You can put away any leftover player boards and starting ships because you won't need them in this game. What you will need is this deck of ships here, so keep that close by. And now you're ready to begin the game, starting with our first player, Boba Fett. Outer Rim is an adventure game. It's got some pick up and deliver, delivering cargo. It's got some questing where you go and complete quests. You've got some bounty hunting, which is a mixture of sort of questing and cargo, uh, pick up and delivery. You've got a bit of storytelling elements as well as you encounter different things around the board. And you've got a little bit of light combat, some dice rolling. And ultimately you're trying to accrue fame points and become the most famous or infamous bounty hunter, mercenary, smuggler in the Outer Rim. Now you can play to 8, 10, or 12 fame points, which are tracked here on your player board, and you decide in advance how many you want to play to. It's recommended to play to 8 for your first game, which is a bit shorter. Even the standard game is 10, or you can play a longer game up to 12. The game will end when someone has accrued 10 or the target number of fame points. So there are five ways to gain fame in the game. You can complete your personal goal or your ship's goal, so if you remember, we looked at our character cards earlier, and I said to lay out your character card with the personal goal side face up. Well, that's your personal goal here, and it will have a personal mission for you. For example, Boba Fett will complete his personal goal when he gains rewards from two bounties. And then he'll flip over to his stronger side, which gives him a new special ability, and also he will gain a fame point. Ships also have goals like this. So you can see here the ship goal here on the Fire Spray 31 Patrol Craft. And if you complete it, it becomes Boba Fett's Slave 1 ship, which has a special ability, and also when you do that, you'll gain a fame. You can also do jobs and bounties. Bounties involve finding these contacts around the board, finding one in particular, and either eliminating them or capturing them and delivering them somewhere. You can choose depending on how hard you want to go at it, but typically it's harder to deliver a live bounty, but more rewarding, and usually it gives you fame. You can also do jobs, which are sort of like long quests and where you have to go to a specific planet and complete a number of challenges and that usually results in fame as well. The third thing you can do is deliver cargo, although that doesn't usually result in fame. That usually just gives you reputation points and financial rewards. But if the cargo is illegal, it's classed as smuggling, which suddenly makes you famous. So if you're smuggling illegal cargo, you can gain fame that way. You've also got these patrol tokens we set out during the setup of the game. You've got the four factions of patrol tokens, and there are four different 
types of patrol token that escalate in challenge. If you defeat the level two or three patrol tokens, you'll gain a fame point from that. So here you can see the rebel and syndicate patrol tokens that we put out. If you defeat the level two or three rebel tokens, you can see here they've got that yellow fame symbol on them there, and that's gonna give you a fame point if you defeat either of these ships. Note that the level one and the level four do not give out fame. The level four is actually unkillable, and the level one gives you credits. The last way to get fame is by buying cards from this luxury deck. These are items that are so ostentatious that they can't help but make you famous. For example, we have here the Dejaric Hollow Table, famous from the Star Wars the table famously on the Millennium Falcon, and it costs 10,000 credits. But if you have two or more crew and this table, you gain a fame point. It also gives you a special ability. And this is actually a cargo card, more on that later. Whenever you gain any fame, just take this little token here and move it up the appropriate number of spaces on your player board. So you're gonna be racing around the outer rim, jumping between the planets, trying to complete all these different things in order to accrue fame. And it's a bit sandboxy, you can kind of go which way you want. You're gonna be sort of optimizing paths and avoiding the patrol ships and maybe avoiding other players, depending on what their missions are. Players go in a clockwise order from the first player. And once the last player goes, the first player starts again. And you just keep going around the table until someone's won. A player's turn consists of three distinct steps. The planning step, the action step, and the encounter step. So I'll run you through each of these steps in order to tell you what happens and how they work in the game. Once you know how to do these three steps, you've pretty much got the game down because you just repeat those three steps over and over and things just get more complicated as you accrue gear and items and jobs and bounties and new spaceships and all kinds of cool stuff. And I'll explain the player boards at times when it makes the most sense as we go through a player turn. So the first thing you do in the game is the planning step. And this kind of represents us getting ready for whatever the daily mission is or whatever's going on. There are three things you can do in the planning step. Two are very, very simple. The first thing you can do is just take 2,000 credits. This represents you spending your time doing odd jobs or little jobs or whatever, somewhere in the galaxy. Maybe you're, you know, uh, picking up some cargo or dropping someone off somewhere. So you just gain 2,000 credits, stick it on your spaceship. That's it. That's you. The second thing you can do is heal all of the damage on your player card and your ship card. So you're gonna be getting into encounters, into struggles in the Outer Rim, things can get a bit dangerous. You'll be grabbing these damage tokens and you'll be putting them out on your character as you take damage and on your ship as you take damage as well. You can, during the playing step, elect to remove all of that. And this is you stopping and recuperating and repairing your ship and just generally getting yourself together. However, the most common thing you'll be doing in the planning step is moving. So if you don't do either of those other two things, you can move. And this will become a more difficult choice later on as you're keen to get on with uh, traveling around the outer rim, but you must decide when to stop and heal or collect more cash. When you move, you always move along these space lanes on these yellow points called nav points between planets. You can stop on any nav point in the game, Ideally, you want to move between the planets because the planets are where you're going to have the most interesting interactions. So let's quickly have a look at our spaceships to see how far we can go. Every ship has three stats. We'll talk about the bottom two later, but the top stat is called your hyperdrive, and that is your movement points. So if you're in a G1A Starfighter, you have five movement points. So Boba Fett here can move along the nav points and go a one, two, three, four, five to Ord Mantell or five up here to Cantonica. You could also actually move through Han Solo on Lothal here. So players will never fight each other unless they have cards that allow them to fight each other. But if they end in the same space, they can do a trade action. More on that later. There are only two things in the game that really prevent you from moving other than your limited ship's drive. The first are these patrols. If you are not friendly with a faction, then you must stop on their patrol ship. Now, if you're neutral with them, then they're just really checking you out. So you have to end your turn here and wait, and then you can move freely off them next turn. However, if you've got negative reputation with them, then they are going to attack you later on. So more about that when we get to the encounter step. Remember that your faction reputation is tracked here on your player board. Now you'll start neutral with most factions, although you might start with positive reputation or negative reputation depending on who you are but these will change over the course of the game. The second thing that can prevent your movement is this maelstrom. If Boba Fett wants to move in here, he goes a one, two, three, and then he has to stop on the maelstrom. And then he has to draw a maelstrom encounter card, but more on that when we get to the encounter phase. 
So that's the planning phase. Money, repairs, movement. You've got to choose one and you can only do one. You might find cards that instruct you to do things in the planning phase as well, but those will be card specific and I haven't seen all the cards in the game. So just keep an eye out for that keyword planning in bold. The next phase is the action phase. In the action phase, you can do any number of actions, but you can only do each action once. You can deliver cargoes and bounties. You can interact with the marketplace. You can trade cards with other players. And you can do anything that has the keyword action in bold on it. And each of those counts as one thing. So you could activate two different cards, each with the keyword action, but you can only activate each card once. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is buying cards at the marketplace. So the important thing to note about the market action is you can only do it if you're on a planet, not if you're on a nav point. So these are the cards available for purchase in the marketplace, and there are two things you can do during a market action. The first one, is that you can burn the top card of any deck. And you might want to do this for two reasons. The first reason is you're trying to find a card in the deck that you want. Maybe you don't like the Millennium Falcon because you're a crazy person. You might burn this card, which means putting it face down under the deck, and then you'll reveal the new card. You might also decide that you really don't want your opponent to have a Vibra Knife, so you might elect to burn that. Note that during a market action, you can only burn one card, so you have to choose carefully. Whenever you reveal a new card, you don't do anything further. So you don't resolve any of the text on that card, you just reveal the next card in the marketplace. The second thing you do in a marketplace action is buy a card. And when you buy a card, you'll pay the cost in the top right of the card, which is up here, and then you'll take that card and put it on your player board. Now there are many different kinds of cards here. We've got two cargo cards, we've got a gear card, We've got a bounty card here, and we've got a spaceship here as well. Now spaceships work a bit differently, so we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you buy, say, a bounty, you're, what you're really doing is accepting a job. And remember, you can only do the market action once, so you must choose just one card to have. So in this case, you're going to hunt down Hira Syndulla, a nasty rebel operative, and you're going to take this card and put it on your player board. So you've got a job or bounty section here, so this note, you know that you can only have two bounties or jobs at any given time. And now Boba Fett's got this bounty here to go and capture Hira Syndulla. Once you've taken a card from the marketplace, you reveal the next card on the deck. If it doesn't show anything other than the deck symbol, you're fine. But let's say Han Solo bought this cargo. He would have to store it on his ship, but unfortunately he's only got room for one cargo card. He'll ditch this cargo he's got because it's a bit rubbish, and he'll replace it with this one, and he's going to have to pay 1000 to take it. Now he reveals the next card on this deck, which has got the cargo symbol, but it's also got this patrol symbol. Whenever you buy a card from the marketplace and you reveal a patrol symbol, you must resolve that patrol. In this case, what we've got is the syndicate moving three spaces. So check the faction side, check the number, that's the number of spaces they move. When you activate a patrol, it will always move towards you, but you can choose the route. The only time you can't choose the route if it, is if it would reach your space. So in this case, we could go one, two, three, or one, two. And because that would reach Han Solo, we must take this route. If it would not reach the space, then we can choose either route, even if it's longer. Now, because this happened in the action step, nothing ha will further will happen until the encounter step, at which point, if Han Solo has a negative reputation with the Syndicate, he's in trouble. But if he has a neutral or good relationship with them, then he can ignore them if he wants to. Of course, he could always elect to fight them if he so chose. More on fighting patrols and stuff later. Before I finish up the market phase, just note that uh, as a sneaky smuggler bounty hunter type, you are always bartering, which means that if you ever replace a card with a monetary cost on it, with another card of the same type, then you can deduct the cost of this card from your new card, because you're essentially bartering your droid parts for the Dejar hollow table. What this means is that instead of paying 10,000, you only have to pay 9,000. When you discard a card, just put it back on the bottom of the deck it came from. Let's look at a gear card. So Boba Fett decides to buy his backpack. That's pretty cool, it's a jetpack. When you buy this card, obviously you pay the credit price, and then you can just put it on your player board. And you'll see here, Boba Fett's got two gear slots, so when he purchases that, he just slides it into the top of his player board here, and this gives him a new special ability. Then he'll reveal the next card, and resolve the patrol symbol. Let's look at buying a ship. So if you buy a spaceship, you just pay the cost here, then you go into the pool of spaceships Find the appropriate spaceship sheet, and then replace your existing ship. So when you replace a ship, you get to keep 
all of your cards, that includes any mods or any crew members you might have as well on the ship, you just get rid of your ship and replace it with the new one. Make sure that when you do buy a new ship, you put it down with the ship goal side face up. That means it hasn't got the cool name on it yet. If you decide to buy another ship later, the bartering rule still applies. So you deduct the cost of this ship from your new and better ship that's replacing it. So here we've got a job. Jobs are just like basically anything else. So when you take one, you flip over the next card, resolve any patrol icons on it. But you take this and you put it on your player board. Note that it's got zero cost because you're not really buying something, you're taking on work. Now these words down here are super important. We'll talk about them in a minute. This is called the Casino Heist. And you get a bit of flavor text. The casino has more credits than they know what to do with. No one will notice if you skim, skim a little off the top, right? So then it says uh, you've got a restriction, cannot buy on Cantonica. So then you have to go to Cantonica and you resolve story card 42. And then you gain 15,000 credits and remove this card from the game if you are successful. Jobs are typically like little stories. And what you'll do is you'll go into the data bank, you'll find a card that has a sort of a sequential story on it that you'll resolve in order to receive the rewards. Now what's important about this card here is this keyword encounter. In the action phase, all we're going to do is accept this card and put it on our player board. If we want to resolve it, we have to go to Cantonica, and then in the encounter phase, we'll resolve 40, card 42 as our encounter. So for now, let's put our job down here on our player board, and we'll look at how to resolve that in the encounter phase. In the market phase, you might also find yourself buying crew members, and if you buy a crew member, you just uh, pay the cost, and you get the card, and you stick it on your spaceship. And that's it for the market action. You burn a card, you buy a card. Or, buy a card, burn a card. You choose the order. The next section we'll talk about is trade, because it's extremely simple. If two players are in the same space, then they can trade. They can trade any number of cards that they want, not including their character card, obviously, and their ship. So you can trade gear, you can trade mods, you can trade cargo, you can trade jobs, you can trade bounties. And the agreement is completely open, so you can trade as much as you want for whatever you want. You could trade all of your stuff for a ton of credits. It's entirely negotiated by the players. So that's a trade action. Obviously, both players have to agree to it in order to carry it out. You can trade crew as well. The only thing you can't trade are your spaceships, your character cards, and any secret cards you've picked up. More about them when we get to the encounter phase. But you can also, at any point, pay another player money. And you might think, why would I want to do this? Well, I'll give you an example. Remember how we can burn cards in the market phase? Well, maybe a card comes up that you really don't want another player to have, but it's not your turn to burn a card. It's someone else's turn. You could pay them to burn a card. Or maybe you really need to borrow some money to really get that spaceship you want before someone else burns it or gets rid of it. You could borrow money from another player on the promise that you give them more money later on. None of these agreements are binding, but you don't need to be in the same space to trade credits because it's the ancient past and we can shoot galactic credits through the spaceways. Just remember that those agreements are not binding, but you can trade credits no matter where you are at any time, even in the middle of an action. But uh, cards and stuff are reserved to a trade action when you're in the same space. So we've looked at market, we've looked at trade. The last one you can do in the action step is deliver and you deliver goods or you deliver bounties. So we'll start off by looking at cargo and then we'll look at bounties. Cargo is pretty straightforward. If you purchase a cargo card, it will usually tell you where you cannot purchase it. So for example, you can't buy the droid parts on Ord Mantel. Then it gives you a destination, take it to Ord Mantel. If you do that, you can deliver it and gain 5,000 credits and also you'll gain a syndicate reputation. This doesn't have the keyword illegal, so it doesn't really gain you any fame points or anything like that. It's just a financial thing that gets you some nice reputation. Note that, so with a single delivery action, you can deliver all of the goods you have, cargo and bounties, bound for Ord Mantel. Then you'll gain all of the rewards. If a cargo is illegal, then you'll have this to deliver, roll a die. On a hit result, deliver this. Otherwise, resolve card one text on it. That means you're going to have to roll one of our combat die from uh, earlier. And if you get this hit result, you're all good. And you'll get the reward. In this case, 7,000 credits and one fame. Note that this has a de destination on it as well. So that's pretty good. But if you get anything other than the hit result, you'll have to consult card one. That means we're going into the data bank here. And we're going to find all of the card ones and draw one at random. And that's going to give you some random outcomes 
based on what you rolled. And it's also going to give you some flavor text at the top as well that, um, you know, might uh, involve uh, moving a patrol around or something like that. So this gives some flavor. And uh, what you do is you just follow the instruction on the card in order to resolve it. Some of them even allow you to deliver the goods if you can get away with a check, like a skill check or something. And more on that later. Once you've resolved the card, just shuffle it back in with the ones and put them back in the appropriate slot on the data bank. So that is delivering cargo. Now what we're going to do is look at a bounty. So if you eliminate the contact, then you'll immediately gain the rewards in the encounter phase. But if you capture them alive, then you'll need to deliver them in the action phase to a specific planet. But once you've captured a bounty, <clears throat> but once you've captured a contact, you'll put them down here on the bounty card to show that you've captured them. Then what you'll do is it says here, deliver here a Sandula token to Lothal. So Boba Fett will have to go to Lothal, at which point he'll gain 15,000 credits, two fame, and one imperial reputation. Boop. Once he's dropped off here a Sandula at, the, at Lothal, take the bounty card and the character token and remove them from the game. And so you've got a job to do, you've got a bounty to capture, so what we'll do next is we'll move into the encounter step. So this is the last phase of a player's turn. Having done planning and the action step, the last phase is the encounter step. Now you might be forced to have an encounter you don't want, or you might be chasing an encounter you need to progress your mission, like a bounty encounter. You must have an encounter. You cannot skip this phase of your turn, so you'll always have some kind of encounter. There are three kinds of basic encounters that you'll have. The first is encounter a patrol. If you've wound up in a space with a patrol and you've got negative reputation with that patrol, then they will attack you and you'll have to fight them. If they, if you don't have negative reputation with them, you can still elect to fight them if you want to. Fighting a patrol is very easy. Well, let's talk now briefly about combat and then we'll look at fighting the patrol. Combat in the game is very simple. Combat takes place in two ways, either with spaceship combat or ground combat but they're fought basically the same way. The only reason we're making a distinction at all is that space combat is using your ship's stats and any cards that affect your spaceship, and ground combat is typically using your character's stats and any cards that affect your character's combat abilities, like gear, for example. You will notice that both your ship and your character have these red and yellow statistics. The red statistic is firepower, and that's your offensive attack, and the yellow statistic is your hit points. That's how much damage you can take before you're defeated. And we'll talk about defeated at the end of this combat section. But combat is really very simple. Just look at your offensive value. Look at the offensive value of your opponent. Now, if it says ground combat, you'll be doing ground combat. And if it says ship combat, you'll be doing space combat. A general rule of thumb is that if you're not on a planet, you'll be doing space-based combat. And if you are on a planet, you'll be doing ground-based combat. But typically, just look at the symbol, whatever the symbol says, do that. It is possible to fight other players if you have a specific card that allows you to do that. If you don't have a card that allows you to do that, you cannot attack another player. But when you're fighting in combat, what you'll do is you'll take the golden dice equal to your attack value and roll them. Then, if you're fighting another player, that player will take golden dice equal to their attack value and roll them as well. If you're fighting against an NPC, such as a patrol ship, or a bounty that you're hunting, then the player to your left will take the attack dice and roll them. Let's imagine for a minute that Boba Fett is going up in ground combat against Ponda Baba as he's trying to attack him. We can see that they've both got the ground combat symbol, so they'll be doing that. Boba Fett will roll three dice and Ponda Baba will roll two. Now, what we're looking for typically here are hits and crits. Hits count for one, crits count for two. Whoever gets the most numbers is the winner. At this juncture, eyes and blanks basically count for nothing unless you have a card or special ability that tells you otherwise. Let's pretend Boba Fett rolled this result and Ponda Baba rolled this one. Boba Fett's got three to Ponda Baba's two, which means that Boba Fett wins. In the event of a draw, Boba Fett would win because he's the attacker in this situation. The attacker wins ties. But we'll go back to this result. Boba Fett will take two damage Ponda Baba would take three damage, but because he's a bounty, instead, by winning, Boba Fett is allowed to capture Ponda Baba, which means he'll take the token and put it down here, or he can elect to eliminate him for an immediate reward. 
Because Ponda Baba rolled two, Boba Fett will take two damage and put them down here. If the damage on Boba Fett's card ever exceeds this yellow value, he is defeated, and I'll talk about that in a minute. If we were to fight this Syndicate Patrol, then you can see here we've got the ship combat, so we'll do exactly the same thing, but we'll be using ship statistics instead. In this case, three versus the G1A Starfighter's attack value of three as well. Any damage dealt will instead be dealt to the ship and not to the character. If the damage on the ship ever equals or exceeds the hull value of the ship, the yellow stat, then the player is defeated as well. Defeated is the same for both exceeding the hull value and hit point value on the cards. If you defeat the patrol token, you'll gain the reward on the token and negative influence with that faction. In this case, the syndicate would go down one and Boba Fett would gain 5,000 credits. Once a patrol token is defeated, you remove it from the game and flip over the next level token, putting it in the nearest nav point. So you'll notice that the Star Viper, which is the next syndicate ship, is has got five attack dice, so it's more aggressive, but it's also worth one fame if you kill it. The next one is more attack and also worth a fame, but the final token has a dash, and that means that this is unkillable. That's why it's got no reward on it. The fourth level patrol ship will always win any conflicts. So that's how combat works. And before we finish up combat, I just want to talk about Boba Fett's gear card, because that's going to lead me into my discussion of skills. Remember Boba Fett's jetpack? That says, during ground combat, cancel one of your opponent's hits. If you have tactics, you may cancel a crit instead. So this helps Boba Fett when, he, when they're rolling their attack dice. If the opponent rolls a hit, he can take that away, so they'll do less damage, increasing his chances of winning, and also increasing the damage he takes. Now, Boba Fett does have tactics which is this keyword down here. This is called a skill, and we're gonna talk about those in more detail in a minute. This just means that uh, in this instance, because he has the tactic skill, he triggers the advanced version of the jetpack, which allows him to cancel his opponent's critical hit. So just before we move on to tactics and skills in more detail, let's cover defeat. Alas, Boba Fett has taken too much damage and he is defeated. When you are defeated, you lie your character down like this. You will lose 3,000 credits, which go back to the bank. If you have any cards with the keyword secret on them, you will lose those. We'll look at secrets in more detail later on. If you are defeated, your turn will immediately end, so you'll complete whatever action you were doing. For example, if you're fighting a contact to capture them as a bounty, then you still get to capture that bounty if you won the conflict, even though you were defeated. However, once that has been resolved, your turn will immediately end and you will have to lie down there until your next planning phase, where you can only stand up, so you will not get to move, you won't get to take any credits, you will remove all damage from your ship and character, and then you can proceed to the action phase as normal. Skill checks are another fundamental part of this experience. All of the characters have these little skills on the bottom of their cards, and they, you can gain some more skills as well. And the reason we need skills is typically because of jobs. In addition to triggering keywords on things like gear, the main reason is jobs. So if you have a job, you can elect to complete your job in the encounter step. Now, when taking a job, you really want to consider these keywords here, which are your skills. In this case, influence, tech, and strength. You'll notice influence is also italicized. That means that having influence is basically going to be essential to completing this job. Let's look at the example. So in the encounter phase, we elect to do the casino heist. We have to be on Cantonica, and this will count as our encounter for the encounter phase, which means we can't have another one, because it's one encounter for each encounter phase. We'll resolve card 42. That means we go here into the data bank and find card 42. Cool. The casino heist. See, it says it right there. And what we get now is some cool flavor text. The first part of the plan involves distracting the security card with small talk. Now what you're going to do is go through these sequentially in order, completing the text on the card. And this may be skill checks, and it may be combat. You just don't know. It's going to be full of surprises. We already looked at combat, so let's talk about the skill checks. The first one says, test influence. If you fail, the job fails, but keep the job card. What that means is that you can attempt the casino heist again later if you fail at this stage. So what we're going to do is test influence. This is called a skill check. Han Solo has no influence. That means he is unskilled. 
Whenever you do a skill check, you roll two dice. And based on whether you are one of three things, unskilled, skilled, or highly skilled will determine your chances of success. If you are unskilled, you will only succeed if you roll a critical hit on either of the two dice. Now, there's only one crit per die, so this is pretty bad odds. If you are skilled, a crit or a regular hit is a success. And if you are highly skilled, a hit, a crit, or an eyeball counts as a success. In order to qualify as skilled, you must have the keyword that matches the type of test you're doing. So in this case, we're testing influence, so Lando would be skilled where Han Solo is not. If you want to unlock more skills, what you have to do is hire crew with skills. There are lots of crew available in the game, and they all come with their own different abilities that will help you out, and skills as well. If you have the same skill appearing twice, for example, Chewbacca's got piloting and so does Han Solo, then you are considered highly skilled, which means that you can succeed on any of the painted faces of the die. The only failure would be double blank. So in this case, Han Solo has to test influence, but because he's unskilled, he needs a critical hit. Let's say by a miracle he does roll a critical hit, then he'll progress down to number two, where it says test tech. Now he is skilled in tech, so he's got a higher chance of success here. Now the reason this is important is because if you have a look on this job card, these are all listed here. And influence is italicized because you must pass influence in order to do the card. However, if tech is not italicized, because if you fail the tech, you suffer a damage and then skip to part four. So that's not critical to succeeding, it's just going to make your life more difficult if you fail. Understanding this code of skills on the job cards is really useful to making sure that you maximize your chances of success, and it will help you to maybe pick up some crew members along the way who have these key skills that you need in order to succeed. We note that in the final round of the Casino Heist, you do a ground combat, which is Strength 3. This is conducted in exactly the same way we just looked at ground combat. So Han Solo will roll three dice against the securities. He needs higher values in the end with hits and crits, and he'll suffer any damage the security guard rolls. Note that you do, it does say if you lose, repeat this step, which means you'll keep going until you either win or you suffer enough damage to become defeated, at which point you'll cease the job. Often the rewards for doing a job are pretty high. In this case, you'd gain 15,000 credits, which is a lot of money. And if you are successful, you'll remove the card from the game. In the encounter phase, if you're in a space with a patrol that you have negative influence with, you must encounter that patrol, and you cannot elect to have a different encounter. Patrols can also visit you on planets as well. You will always have a space conflict with a patrol. So we've talked about combat and jobs in detail. Let's talk now about encountering a contact, and this will lead us into encountering contacts for bounties as well. If you find yourself on a planet, you can encounter one of the contacts on the planet. This is primarily how we find the targets for our bounties. Now, if you don't have a bounty job, what you'll do is you'll go into the data bank here and find the card that rep matches the number on the contact token. So in this case, 20. We'll then flip that over, and it usually has some text on it for you to resolve, and if you do resolve that, you often get this person as a crew, although sometimes they'll give you jobs and other things. So in this case, you can test strength. That's a skill check, like the ones we looked at earlier. If you fail, you suffer two damage, but if you pass, you can hire this member as a crew token for 3,000 credits, and then they'll join you on your ship. However, if you have a bounty job, you may, instead of taking this card from the data deck, Ignore the card entirely, you won't even draw it. Instead, you'll just have a conflict with that character. Now, in the case of Ponda Baba, we'll have a ground conflict because it's got the ground combat symbol. Some characters are famous pilots, and so you might have a space conflict instead. Although, typically, because you're on a planet, you, it will be a ground conflict. Now, in this case, we'll resolve the combat like we looked at earlier, and if Boba Fett wins, he can choose to eliminate or capture Ponda Baba. If Boba Fett loses, then he will have to come back and try again next turn in the next encounter phase. Ponda Baba will remain there face up until such time as the bounty card is resolved or someone takes him on his crew. Now, this might beg the question, what if Han Solo shows up, takes on Ponda Baba as crew, and leaves with Boba Fett's bounty? Well, that is entirely possible. In this case, if Han Solo leaves, say he goes to Takodana here, Boba Fett can go there and elect to fight Ponda Baba on Han Solo's crew. This gives Han Solo two options. Han Solo can either choose to defend his new crew member, or 
let the crew member fight for himself. If Han Solo lets the crew member deal with it themselves, then it's resolved in exactly the same way we just looked at with Paul and Baba's skill versus Boba Fett's. If Han Solo chooses to defend their crew member, then Han Solo will fight Boba Fett instead using Han Solo's combat and any gear and crew abilities that come with that. So it's much more powerful. Regardless of the outcome, the fight is resolved as normal. If you decide to encounter a character and you check out their card, and for whatever reason you don't want that character on your ship, then they're just left face up on the planet. And so everybody knows that this person's hanging out there now. So if you are not encountering a patrol, you've got no jobs you want to do, there's no contacts you want to meet, or you haven't got any bounties, or there's no contacts left on the planet because someone captured them all, you still have to have an encounter. So the last thing to look at are these encounter cards. And there's one for every planet, and also for nav points, and also for the maelstrom. So depending where you are, you will find the appropriate card and reveal it. Now, you'll notice that uh, these cards also have some text here on them, which give you a sort of insight into what kind of encounters you might be getting based on the planet that you're on. So when you encounter one of these cards, you just flip it, and then you just find the appropriate text for the planet you're on and resolve it. Typically, when you resolve an encounter card, you read the flavor text and the text on the card aloud as you resolve it. The only time you wouldn't do this is if you've unlocked a secret. So here we've got uh, on Tatooine, if you have positive hut reputation, you can unlock this secret, which is upside down. And we can tell it's a secret because it's white on dark gray text. So we'll flip it over, it says secret, and then you read this and keep it secret. This will give you a secret mission that you can complete and you don't tell anyone about. Remember, when you're defeated, you lose all your secrets. When you gain a secret, just hide it here under your player board. So it's noting that a lot of our planets here have the faction symbols on them. And if you have an encounter on those planets, then typically you'll be uh, looking at uh, encounters that will gain you influence with those factions. So if you suddenly want to be real friendly with the Imperials, go do some encounters on Lothal. The Maelstrom is a really interesting thing. So if you ever have an encounter in the Maelstrom, they can be really good or really bad. So uh, take your chances. And after you've resolved whichever encounter that you're going to have, then play proceeds in a clockwise order to the next player. The game ends the minute a player acquires enough fame to win the game. So once you hit that threshold, the game stops and you've won. So I think that's pretty much it for Outer Rim. I hope this has helped to give you some enlightenment about what you're going to be doing. Mostly you're going to be flying around, doing jobs. So if this is something that interests you, if you want to see it in action, I hope that you'll come back and join me tomorrow when I'm going to be joined by my friends Chris and Ollie, and we're going to take a jaunt through the Outer Rim. And it's going to be shenanigans. So thanks very much for watching this video. If you like this content, please do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our upcoming adventures. And that always helps us to produce more content. And, you know, let me know in the comments what uh, you want to see in the future, or you know what you liked about this video, or what you didn't like about this video. I read all the comments, even if I don't get to reply to them all. So thank you very much for joining me on this video. I hope that you found it informative and helpful, and that it helps you with your own adventures in the Outer Rim. See you tomorrow for the gameplay.